Reading for research, appraising articles, understanding theories, and having a grasp of the ethics of nursing research are all very important aspects of the evidence-based process. But you need to be able to ask good clinical questions and find high-quality information to have a hope of truly engaging in evidence-based nursing. Over the next two weeks, we are going to focus on getting your clinical curiosity piqued by looking for research topics that are interesting to you, by helping you break down a topic into searchable components, and of course, we're going to play in a few of the research databases. I've seen about a thousand different EBP diagrams, but this is my favorite. The imagery of evidence-based practice as a three-legged stool is great because if you take one of the legs away, the whole thing comes crashing down. Sure, maybe you have the best clinical evidence ever, but if it clashes with the patient's preferences or values, it's worthless. You also need the expertise of the clinician to balance the evidence with what will be best for their individual patient. Evidence-based practice done well is more of an art than a science. So why should we care about evidence-based practice or the whole process of keeping up with evidence? First, you really need to know how to sort the best from the rest when it comes to clinical information. I'm a pretty fast reader, but there is no way I could ever keep up with the current pace of medical and nursing literature. No one can. Another reason to care about EBP is that your patients are counting on you to provide the best care. This whole slide makes me depressed. I mean, 17 years from evidence to implementation is just sad. There are a lot of different takes on the evidence-based practice process, but they all pretty much have the same big concepts. It starts with asking a clinical question or wondering, why do we do things this way? Then it's off to the literature to see if there's an answer or answers to your question. Of course, you can't just accept the articles at face value. You have to read them with a critical eye and select only the best. The Melnick textbook then talks about how you can integrate your findings into your practice, which can be one of the hardest steps. After you make a practice change, you evaluate how it went, and then you share what you find, either by writing an article, presenting at a conference, or so on. Over the next two weeks, we're going to focus primarily on just the first three, mostly on asking and searching, since you've already had some experience with appraising already. So you may be wondering why a librarian is talking to you about evidence-based practice. Well, librarians, especially those of us who specialize in health sciences, are intimately involved with the EBP process, as a huge chunk of it involves asking good research questions and sifting through the literature to find the best stuff. That's what I do every day. Now let's do a really quick overview of what the first three steps in the EBP process are and what we'll be focusing in on. The first part of the process is asking a question that's answerable. In the world of evidence-based practice, this means we want the question to be as specific as possible, but not overly so. Not too broad and not too narrow. We're looking for the just right. And a lovely tool called Pico is going to help get us there. Most of you have at least heard of this, and some may have already had to use it in a previous class. We will be coming back to play with Pico some more. Once you've developed a beautiful clinical question, it's time to get out there and search. For evidence-based practice, you need to know the difference between filtered and unfiltered information. And these are some of the sources we'll be talking about. The last step of the evidence-based practice process that we are going to focus on over the next two weeks is the appraisal piece. You've already done this with some of the rapid critical appraisal checklists, but we're going to go into a little more detail. Okay, let's get this party started.